everybody, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Kemler. Our next guests are the stars and the director and the co-writer of the hilarious, sexy, absurd new show on stars, Now Apocalypse. A show about being young, kind of in love, but having lots and lots and lots and lots of sex. And aliens. I love it. Take a look. I've always had an attraction toward the unknown. I find myself in situations where I can barely breathe. It's like we're on the brink of total annihilation. Hey, don't you ever get bizarre premonitions? Maybe smoke a smidge last pot before bedtime? I'm Ulysses. Everyone in my life right now is insane. I've been camping online for money. Ew. But cool? A night of magic and adventure, which... <laughs> Holy shit! Is this the life of what? I'm a millennial, so sexual fluidity is kind of a requirement. Are you gonna punish me? I'm sorry, was that too much? I realized that one day these crazy adventures will get me into trouble I can't get out of. But I can't help myself. You still don't get it, do you? What do you mean? It's the end of the fucking world as we know it. All we can ever be certain of is the here and now. Life is about taking risks when it counts. It's so fairy tale slash vintage gay porn. Am I losing you? Everybody, please put your hands together from Now Apocalypse, Avan Jogia, Kelly Berglund, Carly Sertino, and Greg Araki. Let's hear it. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Congratulations. I love the show so much. As a, as a huge fan of your work, you know, when I heard that you were directing a TV show, I was like, oh, that's, that's who I want 10 episodes of television from. Thank you. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Am I, is my that excited? Is that what it sounds like? <laughs> Uh, so, how did this whole thing start? I know you pitched it to Steven Soderbergh, but where did the idea come from, and how did the two of you meet to collaborate on this? Because it really does, as someone who follows Carly's work, it does feel like a meeting, a meeting of voices and minds on this. Of minds. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is this show is literally my all-time ultimate dream show. About, um, I guess, about three, two years ago, three years ago, I said I had been directing some episodic TV, which is, to me, always almost going to TV school, sort of learning about how to run a show and how to create a show. And I saw these showrunners, and I worked on the show Riverdale and 13 Reasons Why and American Crime, and I would see these great showrunners, but it's so much work to run a show. It's like an un you literally work 24-7. And I was thinking that, you know, it's so much work, I don't even know if I could do it. Like, and I would only do it if it could be this ultimate weird Greg Araki show that is just 100% my show. Otherwise, it kind of wasn't worth it to, to do. Right. Instead of having to deal with other people's input and, and trying to tell you more like of the show. book and, right. you know. So I literally just sort of sat down one day, and I had at that point met Avin. We did a short film together a few years ago, and I'd also met Carly because she had written a script that I got attached to a, a little independent film that I got attached to produce and direct. So I met Carly, and we just immediately hit it off, and... Um, because we're very much sort of sex positive and we really uh, have a very similar view of uh, very similar sensibilities. And having met Avin, um, he just really impressed me as this is cool, artistic, kind of romantic character in a, like he's a millennial, but sort of to me, it's almost out of time you know, from a different era. So I, I, I just came dressed as if I was from a different era. <laughs> <laughs> I have suspenders on my pants. <laughs> This is a normal thing, though, with him. This isn't new. So, uh, yeah, and he was so well-dressed. Like, it's like a crazy. But so I, out of this, out of, you know, this idea, the idea of the sort of fictionalized Avin, a fictionalized queer Avin and a fictionalized Carly and they're best friends and they live in Los Angeles and Los Angeles is a surreal kind of crazy place and he's a stoner, and you know, just sort of, sort of from there, this idea germinated, and I called up Carly and I said, I'm working on the spec script, I have no idea what's gonna happen to it. You know, it could probably just sit on the shelf for like years, like many of my projects. <laughs> <laughs> and and she's, all, I'm always, do you wanna write it with me? She's, oh yeah, yeah, let's do it. So we wrote it on spec, totally had no idea what was gonna happen with it, and I sent it to Greg Jacobs, who was a friend of mine, I met him on uh, the Amazon show Red Oaks, which I directed a couple years ago. 
And he just flipped over it. He's like, literally, I, I love this script. I couldn't turn the pages fast enough. What can I do? And like, how can I help you get this made? And I said, I don't know. And so he just, he gave it <laughs> Make to, it. no, he gave it to Soderbergh, who has a deal at Stars, and Stars called us in, and like that, it happened. It never, and I told Carly, because um, she'd never you know, done anything like this before, this isn't how TV works. TV is normally, you get a development deal, you write a script, you write 10 re rewrites of that script, maybe they make the pilot, you make the pilot, you wait another six months and they go, I'm sorry, your pilot didn't get picked up and now you gotta start over again. You know what I mean? If that happens. That's you write something you like, you beat it to death until yeah, you don't until like it it's, anymore, it's you shoot You're, it and then they kick you out the yeah, door. Yeah, it's, it's literally just, like, I mean. You didn't like the thing that we made you ruin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it. So it was really, you know, this experience, you know, has been such a crazy, perfect dream experience. It's, the show is 10 episodes totally uncensored it is the craziest thing i've we went in and pitched like this is gonna be the craziest show on tv unlike any other show and it's and it and, is that and stars was like bring it on that's exactly what we want and they never said no to us they never said oh that's a little too and the, believe me in the 10 episodes we go to some crazy places. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I've only I've I've only seen two, and I loved them, and they went to crazy places. But you've told me the back half of the show is completely insane. Episode completely four insane. actually also literally made me gasp, and I like <laughs> and you made like it. You when, made it. Yeah. I saw it. I was like, whoa! And then there's the sex episode, like, which is that? I've episode seen two episodes. So yeah, imagine I don't understand what a the, sex episode. There's could a be. specific sex, sex episode. <laughs> It was an experimental. It's Greg, he was like, I've always had this idea when we were writing season one. He was like, I always had this crazy idea that, like, what if there was just an entire episode of television where people were having sex for the whole time? Like, do you think that that would be possible or sustainable? <laughs> I was like, let's try. And we succeed. It's not like penetration the whole time. <laughs> There's a lot of, you know. Yeah. Just one close up. All, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven minutes. But all just a VO. Banging. Just a VO yeah. over top of like a methodical it's, quiet. It's not the Gaspar Noe version of it. It's, <laughs> it's, but yeah, no, it's like literally like, yeah, it all happens in one night. It's a, it's are like, multiple? Is it? Is it? Are multiple people having sex, or is it like intercutting different couples having sex? Oh, okay. We're yeah. all together. And I'm just kidding. Well, it could be like a big group <laughs> yeah, sex. So we do have that in. scene as well. Anyway, I don't want to give too much away. Um, but I think that what is interesting about the show, because it sounds just like major shock value, sex for thirty minutes, but. Um, what's cool about the show is that I don't think the sex is there just to be titillating. It's not just like a lot of film or television where there's a quick sex scene to show you got to show the audience that these people have sex and are in a relationship. Whereas in this show, the sex is telling you something about the characters. It's pushing the storyline forward. There's a lot of talking and relationship, um, like conflict and personal evolution for these people in the sex scenes. Because a lot of what we talk about is that sex is a huge part of a person's identity and um, that when you're in these intimate situations with another person, you see a side of them that you don't see in normal life. So the sex scenes in the show, have they have, they have depth. It's, <laughs> it's relevatory to the characters. Like, it, like you know, like you, the reason why you have a scene between two people who, you know, t it, it kind of highlights the differences between them based on sex, because it's a nuanced thing, and they're, so it can be nuanced. They're all very different, too, in their own sex lives, and it's very, uh, it's very evident across all the... Four of us, you know, and it's and you want them. I mean, like you said, like this is what I think is so cool. There's so much heart in these characters. You really want them. So it's not just titillation. It's like you you want them to to, to succeed and find love. Yeah, and all I mean, the show is terrible porn. <laughs> it's not meant to like get you off or titillate you. It's it's porn is for that. Porn. <laughs> it's really the sex scenes are really not titillating at all. They're more. And a, the example I always give. <laughs> It's the show. I'll be the judge the of that. The I show's think. very sexy. I'm not saying I was titillated, but, but I was definitely like, "Whoa!" Yeah, no, the show's very sexy and very. It, but the example I always give is episode two, where Kelly has a long scene with her with Desmond, who plays her boyfriend, and the scene is like eight minutes long, and they're naked. It's like a sex scene, but there's this whole thing where they sort of flirt with BDSM, and they, he's. She, he's asked her to spank him, and and you Full conversation. You know, and you quit uh, for cute. me. I quickly forget that it's a sex scene and that you're naked. It's really a, so much because you, you guys are so great, and the, you're learning so much about the characters and that moment. And it's really about 
your interaction. Like you kind of, it, the example I give is like, you know, when Nicole Kidman's naked in Big Little Lies, I'm always like, oh, Nicole Kidman's naked. And I, that's what the whole scene's about to me. And in our show, I really feel like I sort of forget that. And the yeah. sex scenes really become about what these characters are going through. And that's one reason why I'm so interested. You know, all my films have always had a lot of sex and sexuality in them, is I feel like those are the moments when you are, you really reveal your deepest secrets. Like you, you really get to know the characters in a very truthful and a very intimate way. And the example that I give is that everybody has a sort of public persona that you present when you go to Starbucks or whatever, just to the world, you know. But the people you've slept with know you in a way that nobody else knows you, even your best, best friend. So I think that's what, to me, the show is about, is getting to know these characters. And, you know, the cast are so fantastic that by the end of 10 seasons, you're so, you know them so well and you're so intimate with them. And I was so happy with, like, I mean, I just love all these characters so much. I like, they're like my best friends. It's one of the sweetest shows, I think, running right now if there is everything is really dark and this while there's darkness all of it is kind of with a light touch and the characters as are silly and fun and they're really sexy as well not titillating though excuse and they me don't Joy, right like se- like you talk about this and actually i i love listening to you guys talk about the show because it's, it's revealing for them as it is for me but like sexual joy right like having a show where characters have agency over their bodies they have agency over their partners uh, um, and who they want to be with and their sexuality, and it's joyful. There's so much sex is like uh, is inundated with guilt and 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 and, and like um, and sort of like and negative feelings and fear, you know. And this is not there's no one's scared of of sex, you know. There's a lot of liberation through sex in this show, especially with my character. Like that's where she finds her confidence and applies it to the rest of her life, and she starts to figure out her path like through her sexual journey. So it's, it's all in a very positive light. Uh, the female characters especially too, very uh, powerful sexually, um, powerful on their relationships, which is cool to see as well. It shines a positive light on that. So it's just a great message, right? We're just sending <laughs> such a good message. Do you, do you feel like there's sh- so much shame on sex and entertainment because, and you might, have something to say about this, Carly? Because I think you write about this. You're a the, lot. Expert. Um, the expert. Sex expert. Sex <laughs> but when it comes to when it comes to telling a story, you always need conflict. And so, if a sex scene is going to happen, the conflict could come from maybe that shouldn't have happened. That sex between those two characters. So thereby, a shame develops around that. And because sex has been depicted through narrative and story for so long, conflict has been the sort of epicenter of where sex lies. And thereby, shame is kind of related to it consistently. Did you find it difficult at all to write sex into episodes without having any kind of shame conflict attached to it? Um, I didn't find it difficult, actually, because I think that from the outset, we really wanted this to be a show that celebrates sexuality. And um, through my other work, that's really always been the goal for me and the Slut Ever, the show that I make and the, the, my column that I write. It's about, it's about overcoming the idea of shame. And obviously, these characters aren't just like completely shameless um, like unrealistically confident about their sexuality, like right, the character of Carly is part of her journey is like overcoming um, her fear about being sexually dominant, right? Like they have sexual journeys, but I just feel like sex is going through such a dark time right now. Um, and this is our country. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're having a really, a lot of important conversations around sex, you know, be it consent and sexual harassment. But I just feel like alongside of those conversations, we need to remind people that sex is actually fun (laughs) and it connects you to people and it's a way to build confidence and it, you know, it forms who you are as a person. And so often in film and television, um, we just see these sexual victims, specifically women, like women having bad sexual experiences and it traumatizing them. And I feel like that's a really self-fulfilling prophecy. If all you see on TV is these girls like having drunk sex that they regret and then being traumatized, like how do you not, how does that not inform your life if you end up in a negative sexual experience? And I think what's great about these characters is that they're sexually resilient. They don't have the perfect sex lives, but when something not so great happens, you know, where, like you go to an orgy and it turns out not to be fun, <laughs> you can just you know, keep like living that, life. Or like yeah, you have a threesome and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't want someone sleeping with my loved one. I don't think I want that. That kind of conflict is the conflict that I think we explore in the show, not the, oh, 
uh, is sex is terrifying and full of fear, you know? Mm-hmm. What yeah, kind I mean, of, and I think there can be all kinds of conflict. You know, I mean, that's one right. of the things about the show. It's not just about shame. I mean, one of the big conflicts for season one is the Ford Severine relationship. You know, Ford Severine aren't here, unfortunately. But, you know, she wants to be non-monogamous and he wants to be monogamous and he decides to, like, let's try it. And and so, you know, they love each other and they and there's no shame involved, but it, there's just this level of, we want different things, and we're finding out that out in, in you know through the course of our relationship. And so I think that there's all kinds of different stories that can open up about sex and sexuality that you know aren't necessarily this dark, shameful sort of secret thing. What's it like writing and performing in a, a Gregoraki uh, piece? Because I've, he has a very distinct style, both of I think of writing as well and directing, but also the performances have a very specific way that they come out where the the jokes have to come out a certain way and everybody has to kind of be on the same page as to how they're presented. We talked about at the certain point we had to to get to this set of like uh, shorthand. He'd be like, you know, he'd come up and be like, it's a little bit more like... (laughs) And I'd be like, oh yeah, you mean the Gregor Rocky like... Thing and then we, we talk and, it, and, and and you'll see it in the show. It's that like oh the world is spinning upside down sort of like energy then dread and fear and it's a very complicated thing that we're able to convey by just like a feeling and I think I well I I mean you have I think we have a similar story about this as a teenager Greg Araki films I was watching all your films and all the time. it's right and and um, so in that regard i was coming to this the party kind of like knowing a little bit about the host you know and that was an analogy i didn't need uh, <laughs> oh, it was good it. it was good i pulled it off it stuck the landing but i didn't really need it it also matched the their outfit as well you yeah, know, like yeah. it's still old school <laughs> yeah but yeah no so yeah so i had I knew a little bit about the the the, the, the host so it, was, it felt if <laughs> so it felt it felt like i was kind of like stepping into something i at least i had some knowledge of yeah kelly I mean, for me, the whole experience, you know, there's a little bit of, um, it, it's intimidating uh, reading these 10 scripts, especially, you know, I had never done anything like this before. I don't think anyone in the world has ever done anything like she this. She was on Lab. No one can say they've done anything like this. <laughs> but especially for me, it was kind of a big step. Um, and I knew it would be a challenge for me as an actor and me personally, but I was so excited about it. Um, and then actually getting onto set um, was nothing but so much fun. And that's because of like this whole sort of vibe that Greg sets with the crew, with the cast, everyone's on the same page. Um, and it, it's so funny, like I, I always had an idea in my head of like, you know, I read the scripts, I acted in the thing, but like until you see it, you're like, oh, that's so sick. <laughs> like, like you don't really know and it's so Greg and it's, uh, you don't really see it until the final result. But I mean, throughout the whole process, it was just nothing but easy going and just, a really great time. Show up and have fun. Yeah, Get no, everybody, fun. The, I mean, that's one of the things about the show I'm so excited about is that everybody in the cast, Avin, Kelly, um, you know, Bo and Roxanne and all of the supporting players, everybody, um, they're all so fantastic. And so, I mean, it's just the most amazing cast ever. We got so lucky. And um, that they all bring so much to the characters and their performances and I, that's when I watched all 10 episodes put together it's just like these characters are just so alive you know what I mean and as the as you know the right having written them you know with Carly it's like they're on the page and you know how they're going to sort of talk and look and 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 um what they'll feel like but to see them alive the care the actors did such an amazing job i mean hats off to their amazing amazing talents i mean I not remember, to reflect that funny. compliment back at you but also you uh collect really good i mean like you can't go about making the show without a cast that totally gets it and so the vetting process of you going and making sure that everybody who's who's going to be and ultimately come to set is going to be a cool vibe and is going to be sex positive to begin with in order like so no one's got any hang-ups and if they hang up have hang-ups this that's a conversation that can totally take place and in, in you know in creating that environment so you ca- like you collect the cast that you know that you have so it's actually you it's, the compliment comes right back to you we were no we were also really lucky in the sense that our show was made in a very unconventional way we had all 10 scripts written before we even start most tv shows sort of write as they go along you block shoot we block shot the. I directed all ten episodes. We block shot the whole thing. Forty days, right? Forty days. Yeah, That's just insane. Banged it out. But yeah, no, it was, it was crazy, but really banged it out. Really, really banged it out. Sorry, I it had to. 
know, but it was. Was that like what, like ten episodes? So like uh, an four, ep- every four days. Four episode? days every episode. Yeah. So it was a pretty intense schedule. But um, you know, I've been making indie films for years and working in TV for the past two three years. So I picked up a lot of tricks and you had to use every single one of them to pull it off. But it, the show turned out fantastic. And um, again, it, it, you know, there's just perform. There's, uh, that's why, you know, I've seen every episode now literally like a hundred times because I worked on the editing and everything. And um, every time I watch it, I get another nuance from these guys. It's just like the performances are so rich and there's just so much going on. And Kelly and Ab in particular, they, you know, play besties and they just have such amazing chemistry. You know, I mean, they're like so... You just really buy that relationship, which is so sort of the center of the show, I think. And Kelly, you are in some ways inspired by, I mean, you're named Carly in the show. There's Carly with a a C and Carly with a K, and they're completely different. I mean, I I was wondering as I was watching the show if I was watching conversations between the two of you and you have brunch. That's how we were born. Look look at those two and then look at these two. Greg and Carly, that's that's why we're here. We're just their babies. Two Asian guys. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they made me dye my hair blonde for the show. I wonder why. Wow, so crazy. Like, I think maybe she'd look better blonde. I don't know. Like, I just, I, something about, like, blondes. And, like, it's just coming to me out of nowhere. <laughs> Did you feel like you were writing uh, about yourself a lot? <laughs> well, name it. Not that it's autobiographical. Yeah. Yeah. Marley was literally like, can we please change her name? And I'm just like, no, I'll change, I'll make it a C. But it's like. That was the only time you said no to me, basically. <laughs> um, definitely the character, I see her as a little sister who has a lot. I mean, all the characters I pull from my life experiences and the experiences of my friends um, in writing them, and I think you do too, but definitely the character of Carly I pull from my life experience the most, and I feel really, really close to that character. You know, After reading your book, too, I'm like, I do that in this show. Like, (laughs) I do that, I do that. Interesting. Yeah. What a weird coincidence. (laughs) It's that period in your life, in your early mid-20s, when you're just like experimenting with your sexuality and figuring out who you are when your life is a giant question mark. And I mean, obviously the Carly character lives in LA and is an an aspiring actress and um, is a cam girl and none of those things are, you know, in line with my life. But, you know, I have worked in the sex industry at points and that's a big part of Carly's character arc. And that was something that was exciting for me to write about because sex workers on TV are always just like super two dimensional victims who like die at the end. And um, that's not your character arc. And I think yet, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, what's so cool is that you know, the character of Carly finds confidence in her work as a cam girl, and it's not you know at the center of her storyline or her identity, but it's a part of what makes her who she is. And so, so yeah, it's not entirely me, but definitely part me. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, a second ago we were talking about being in a the the Greg Araki world, and I'm curious what it was like writing for that. If it felt like you knew you were writing for that, or if it if that wasn't something that you had to be conscious of. And I'm wondering if that's something that you're conscious of as well when you're creating your worlds, or if it's really just all instinct and it kind of comes out as um, as uniformly aesthetic as it does. I mean that as a compliment. Uniform doesn't sound like a compliment, but I mean it as one. Um. Well. As Avin said, I was a fan of his for so long, so it was so crazy to be able to work with him. He'd just been making these sexually progressive, exciting, fun movies forever. So um, forever. I didn't feel like I, <laughs> since the dawn of time, and then since before Kelly oh, was Duke born. Generation really. sex positive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, good. it's sexually Fluidity. adventurous. Yeah. Adventurous. You said the living end. <laughs> no, Doom Generation. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's not just like blanket sex positivity, but it's like these characters, they find a sense of thrill and adventure through sex, I think is probably something that you could always say. But um, but I think that we are, our ideas are really in line in a lot of ways. So I don't think I was like writing for a Greg show, but... um. But it was a lot, we wrote really separately. So we'll, I'll help him develop storylines, but then he'll say like, go off and write this scene and this scene and this scene. And then he kind of weaves all the scenes together to create the final script. So I, I, you gave me like a lot of freedom, really. Yeah, I mean, we're very, you know, when I first met Carly, we're just kindred spirits, you know. So it's interesting, you know, that she wrote some scenes, I wrote some scenes, and it's like there's no seam of like, oh, that's a Carly scene, that's the scene. I, you know, I mean, it's like it all kind of blends together in crazy Greg Araki world. And, um, but see, that's the, do you, are you aware of the, what the crazy Greg Araki world is? I'm aware of this, sh- this show is just 
you know, it's like my brand and it's like to the nth degree. You know, I mean, I told like all my, I got to work with my usual DP and my production designer and the costume designer. And, and I'm just like, this is like, you know, what we've done, the, my aesthetic, my style, but I don't want everybody to like just crank it up and you know, like crank it up to 11. And if it's too much, like maybe we'll bring it down a little bit. But the idea was I wanted to, t it's kind of to me, the show is very much the culmination of everything, I've, every movie I've ever made, every character, every theme, every motif, every song. I've ever loved every everything I love is kind of in this show, but it like amped up to like you know a few notches. So um, it was very uh, super easy to write and to create because it was just really kind of my imagination and, and just having free reign over it and really just you know going wild. And it was such a kind of liberating and exhilarating thing to work on. Someone asked me, I was watching it, and someone asked me, he was like, are you watching now Apocalypse? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, is it good? And I was like, I love it. I was like, do you know Greg Rocky's work? Uh -huh. And they said no. And I was like, well, if you like characters that say things like, eat my fuck, you will <laughs> like this show. And they started laughing, and I was like, okay, you're going to love the show. Then. <laughs> like, just such, I mean, that's not the only element of Greg Rocky's world, but those are, that's like the kind of lines that I love that I think only come from your work. Uh yeah, I guess. <laughs> Evan, were you going to say something? Sorry. No, I, I, was, I, was just, I was just saying that, like, yeah, you, you, it, it's such a bright Technicolor world, and I, I, I like, if, it's it's really cool to see all the elements of the thing, movies that I like and, and you like that kind of, like, come together and, and be referenced without, without, you know, like, slamming people over the head with reference. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you're just going to love it. it you know? Yeah, it's interesting, too, that... Um, you know, we were talking earlier about my Doom Generation, my kind of earlier movies. It's like, you know, I'm older now than I was in um, when I made those early movies. And uh, I have the benefit of being, a, when I made a movie like Doom Generation, I was very angry, very punk rock. Very like, How old were you when you made Doom Generation? In my early 30s, I think. Uh, right? I think. Because um, it's, what, 1994? Four ninety-five. So it was, anyway, um, so I wasn't you know a teenager. <laughs> certainly, I was an overgrown teenager, but I was much more angst-ridden, much more like those characters. And now, um, you know, with the benefit of age and wisdom, hopefully, and experience, I'm in just in a different place, and I feel like I have a different perspective on all that angst and confusion. I'm still super empathetic to it. I'm super empathetic to the sort of confusions and trying to figure out who you are and who you're sleeping with and what who you're you know with and who you're breaking up with and who's cheating on you. Yeah, like all of that stuff that comes with growing up is something that I'll always very much be drawn to and relate to. But I do have the benefit of distance now and age and wisdom. And, and so there's a level, I think that's kind of where the the sweetness and the fondness comes because I really feel because I'm yeah I can really see the force for the trees now when I when I couldn't for the <laughs> for the doom generation so the doom generation to me is really like this super angry nihilistic like crazy chaotic movie and this show is actually weird in the sense that it's still very unbridled and very uncompromised and just this very kind of punk rock vision but it's has a sweetness to it and accessibility that's really different than some of my earlier films, I think. And it's kind of interesting the way um, already, you know, and that's why I'm so excited about doing a TV show because it's beamed all over the world. It's not just this little independent film that like plays in some art cinema in like, you know, Soho or something. Um, it's gonna be beamed all over the world into like Arkansas, Kentucky, you know, I mean, just like on everybody's TV, like all around, you know, I wish, I hope it plays in like Russia, you know, it's like the idea of this show just going out, fly on the wall, yeah, in Russia, yeah right. no, but it's like the idea of the show going everywhere, you know, and it's like already like I, we've had these people that are so like they're, the story tells like there's this like 60 year old white guy that is like an assistant sound editor, you know, like worked on the film and he was like, this is my favorite show. Like, I'm obsessed with it. Like, I know what what happens in episode nine, you know, when Cleopatra falls out of the car. You know, I'm just like, all this, like, somebody that, because Carl and I always thought of the show as sort of like Sex in the City. Like, it's for women and gay guys. You know what I mean? That are, like, want to talk about shoes and shit. And, um, and. Alien. Yeah, but it's like, we've we've run into a lot of people that are so far outside of the, that demographic, but they just really love the show. And, like, Greg Jacobs' kid is, like, this 20-year-old 
like college student. It's like super jaded millennial, whatever. And he, you know, doesn't never seen any of my movies, doesn't know anything about, you know, independent cinema or whatever. And he saw the first episode and was like obsessed. He's like, I've never seen anything like this. Like I need to see all 10 episodes right now. You know, so I think that there's something about this show and that's why I'm, you know, so hopeful that, that um, it kind of can really, you know, penetrate the culture because I do think it's a really important Good thing. choice of words there. Yeah, to have, I think it's a good, Dang it. I think it's a good thing to have in our world right now because I do think we kind of live in a dark and um, somewhat scary time and I think it's important for a show like this to be out there. But I also think, like, you know, everyone wants to talk to me about how, um, you know, it's a millennial show, like millennials, and, like, millennials are pushing the boundary. <clears throat> and, and, you know, you probably won't agree with this because you're humble, but, like, the culture is caught up to Greg. Greg hasn't made a show for the culture. Like, this is the, the themes that millennials have been, like, talking about and talking through or been themes in your movies forever, right? And so, like, it's interesting that, like, you are going to be beaming to all these places, but the places you're beaming to are completely, like they're they still got there's still lots of work to do, but they're they've updated since you know 1998, you know, and like and they're like on the internet and seeing about the, knowing about sex positivity and all these conversations, and so it's like I always think that's really interesting. It's like, you know, your work is now being shown at the at the biggest way that it can be, and the culture is finally caught up to something that you've been talking about. So. Yeah, like I. This show, you know, the star of the show is a um, guy, uh, a guy, a guy who <laughs> some is, guy uh, <laughs> bisexual, right? Um, mostly gay, but also sleeps with women. And his best friend is a funny, sex positive, nuanced sex worker. And I don't think that that would have been on TV in a big show even like five years ago. I mean, Greg's uh, movies have had sexually fluid male characters in them for a long time, but that's just something that we really don't see on television really at all. I mean, to the point where when you made Doom Generation, the joke was that you put a heterosexual movie, but you had sexually fluid characters in it because the culture was so far behind what you were putting out there. You could kind of that, make fun of them while they were watching it. was a joke for a producer that I was working with. He's all, you need to, like, because I had made The Living End, and he's like, you made this gay movie that was so politically incorrect, the gays hate it. <laughs> so you need to make a head... Did, 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 uh, there was, the Living End is one of those movies. I mean, a lot of my early movies are so controversial and so, like... Um, Provocative that they're very divisive, and there's and fucking rules. There's sto- no, there's right. stories of yeah, like punk rock. fights. Yeah, I've had, rock. I've heard a lot of stories about fights breaking out in like gay bars about the living in, like literally people punching each other over <laughs> that movie, which That's of awesome. course, which of course, yeah, it thrills me. It's just like wow, punk rock. I, I did that, cool. But um, but yeah, so you know the. I forgot even what I was talking about. So, yeah, so, so there's definitely... It's funny that that was what used to cause fist fights. I feel like Green Book is causing fist fights <laughs> <now>. <laughs> so, It's like the... It's like the oh, oh, the heterosexual... Yeah, so that's what's the joke. The producer's like, you need to make a heterosexual movie if you're going to make these punk rock movies. So that's like, I'm going to make... So that's why it's called a heterosexual movie by Greg Rocky. But my whole idea of that Doom Generation was to make the queerest heterosexual movie possible, and that's what that movie is. I think you you are tapping into something though when you say that you had initially thought that this was going to be like Sex in the City and that it would be for women and gay men, but you're finding that so many more people like it because we are seeing that more and more people, whether they are straight or gay or bi or black or white, are hungry for different kinds of stories, and that we have seen the straight story of people dating and trying to find love. And we have seen, you know, the story that was specifically for the gay audience as well. And seeing something that's more fluid, everybody's going to be kind of interested in tuning into that. It's going to tap into the culture more broadly. Not a question, just a compliment. There you go. Let's hope so. From your mouth to... (laughs) <laughs> the internet to the internet let's be honest AOL is it correctly it's the internet a lot of people talk on the internet hopefully my voice is louder uh, we have a tweet uh, coming in a twitter question uh, speaking Avin- of the internet there it is there it is the internet. they there speak it is. on the internet too guys uh, Avin and Kelly uh, big fans of you both what were you most looking forward to in going to work on a much more oh, adult show be- coming from a band- fan base that's uh, grown I'm going to say this has grown up with you but grown, yeah, grown with you. That's the thing is that Evan and I have somewhat similar backgrounds. Yeah, we talk about this a lot. Too, a we lot. had a whole conversation about this last night. Um, I mean, and I'm sure we're sort of on the same page here. This is by far, like, I feel like you 
have done more things that introduce your audience to the adult world. Like you're really, you're really going from like, like you're going from a one to an eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm. I've been like trying to like. Yeah. <laughs> He's been like pushing it a little bit, but I'm just like here I am. Like, um, I'm nothing but excited. I mean, I've never been more excited about a role in my entire life. It's something meaty. It's not just like the neutral high school girl who gets bullied by I the lean up girl. against like, the locker and I've You got know, it's like she's a character. She she's has so much, you know, comedy surrounding her and and this super fascinating story with her sex life and and just everything that's involved with that. Like I feel so much happiness from this. Um, clearly, you know, you can't please everyone. I even, you know, with my work before, I wasn't pleasing everyone because someone's got something to say about something always. Um, it's the internet. So. Uh, yeah, so it's... I was really upset about Lab Rats, actually. <laughs> just like, I got some things to tell you. It was, divi it was you. So she, the, she, Very upset about the finale. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, and the people that were 16 years old watching Lab Rats are now 20, 21. So hopefully, you know, they'll like the show, take an interest in it. Um, but if they were eight watching Lab Rats, don't watch the show. No, <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's not <laughs> 13's a great time to start learning about sex. To be fair, uh, in, in, in lieu of uh, 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 cohesive sexual education uh, <laughs> program in America, that might be a... Just watch well, the show. I, I do think... Um, it, all joking it, aside, I do think that young people, because of the... It, it, kids grow up really fast now, and, you know, they become very sexually aware at a very early age. So. I've read the... F I've, we've all... I've read the fan fictions. I know you guys oh, out God. here. Come on now. Well, Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Don't pretend like you, you're like, you all of a sudden you're like, oh, I was watching this innocent show and now you go on the internet and write your little sm smut <laughs> story. Write your little like, story. Like, like, I, like, I didn't, like I didn't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I think my, my, my whole thing is just to, to kind of think back on what you were saying. It's like. Well, no, this is a question for you too. Well, it's, it, it's like, it's like at a certain point, the if you're pleasing everyone, you're, you're, you, that's, you suck. <laughs> you know, and I don't know how to explain that it any other way. It makes you feel bad about, your, you're so worried about it. Like, you're not I, doing I, good art. You're not doing yeah. good art if you're, uh, you're pleasing everyone. And honestly, the whole thing is I'd rather lose a thousand people and gain one uh, 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 fan who, who really sees the kind of career that I want to build for myself. Or someone who cares know? about it or that identifies with it, you know? And, yeah, it and moves it's not going to be for everyone. There's going to be millennials that don't like the show and are affected sure. by it, you know? Like, Again, there's literally nothing I can do about it, um, but it's it's an interesting transition. But We're, I yeah. have nothing but love for the show, and I don't want people to look at me and be like, "Oh, like why is she doing this with her career?" She like she doesn't have to do that. Like <laughs> people don't need to say that. You know what I mean? It's it's I'm perfectly happy, and and this is truly something that is so much bigger and greater than I could even imagine. So you had fun doing it. I did. Yeah. It was so talk was about the, agency. The greatest experience. You know what I mean? Like, ever. <laughs> yeah. she doesn't have to do that. I don't think she cares. What you think. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna do my thing, and you can choose to participate. Um, so um, that's, that's my two cents. I do have a few questions from the audience. Who's a question? Whoa. Hi. Right oh, here. Hi. Hey okay. um, so I first wanted to say I am so excited to watch this. Like, cool. Especially I feel like New York is like the place, you know, that this will do well because we're all like, hey, like sex is good and not always evil. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to ask, you know, since we were talking about uh, your audience is like kind of growing up with you. Um, also, how did you guys change like what you did? Do you, did you do anything differently to prepare for this role compared to like your other roles? And um, for you guys, like, did you um, you know decide to write in a certain way for this new kind of generation of like, you know, like, did you guys have to do anything differently as well for like this new kind of like time that we're living in? Um, I mean, I, I when I talk about preparing for a part, you know, I I don't let um, sort of like previous work kind of get in the way. I just kind of like, it's an individual case to case sort of basis. You know, yeah. you just look at it and you see what the part requires and, and, and you sort of like dig in there. And um, yeah, so I, I don't think it was any kind of special special way of doing really it. different, you know, a little more research I had I worked to do. out. <laughs> I worked out, you know, I worked out cause I, because I'm naked a lot in the show. So I, I, I worked out. That's what I, that's what I did differently this time. So I worked out. Did you guys, uh, did you guys, uh, you know, pander to the millennials with your writing? No. Uh, no, there was no, there's, there's no pandering to anybody with this show. Yeah. It was just like, it was a super fun, supernatural thing. Like, it wasn't really like, oh, we have to research what 
Tinder is. Or what, I mean, it's like Harley. You know, it's like I'm. Yeah, you know, I don't want to say this. Like, can I say this on TV? <laughs> I've been on grind. Like I know what Grinder is. I've been on it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like it's like <laughs> we've said sex a yeah. hundred times in this interview. And you're like, can yeah. I say that? <laughs> so it's like you, it's like the. I think that the whole world that we live in right now, with technology and social media and apps and. You know, I think it's such a fascinating time. I was just talking about this in an interview today. It's like there's just so much material. You know, and the, when you made a movie in the old days, before, you know, the Internet, it's just like, how do people meet? You know, they bump into the street in the grocery store or whatever. You know, it's like, it's all, oh, they're introduced by friends. It's like, but now with everything happens so fast and in such a weird and personal, like, glitchy kind of way, there's just, I just feel like it's so cool in the way that everybody's so connected, but everybody's so disconnected. And it's just like a really fascinating time to make a show like this and I feel like the show is so fun to um, create and to watch because it's like we can just deal with these issues these topics like things just like happen and then we can like write about them and they can be in the show literally last this time last year we were writing season one and it's done already and we're actually um, we haven't got green lit for season two yet but we're writing season two right now and it's like you just write it and it's I mean TV's amazing that way I would say, so I've been writing about sexuality for over a decade, and so it was just convenient that I had done a lot of research into the subject, um, and it was it was super helpful. Like, you know, as you were saying before, two of the characters on the show, Severine and Ford, are experimenting with a non-monogamous relationship, and I have just, like, interviewed 8,000 people who are experimenting with polyamory or openness. Um, you just have a show on? Wasn't one of your ep recent episodes about polyamory? Yeah. yeah. The episode this past Sunday of Slut Ever was about polyamory. And, you know, we interview a non-monogamous relationship coach. And we follow this, the polycule. That's what it's called. <laughs> Piece of information for everyone. <laughs> follow, around, follow around this polycule. And so, so much of that was put into the show. Oh, wait, like that's their group name? Yeah, it's like, like a glamour of dolphins or like the shuttering <laughs> yeah. of butterflies. Yeah. A polycule like, of people. Like a thruple is when. Them. I haven't touched them. No, no, I'm, this is just purely informational. Yeah, we are. I, we are I didn't know we had a group name kidding. for it. It's great. It's like a thruple is when there's three people dating all together, but a polycule is sort of like a molecule of people who are dating, but they also date other people, and it's sort of like a fluid God. moving. I think I saw something. It was like, this one's a triangle, this one's a square, yeah. this one's an X. It's like, they're all different. <laughs> yes, it's complicated, but I respect it because it is so complicated. The, I think also in the promo, didn't they say that they have to keep like Google spreadsheets in Google, in Google Docs <laughs> to like find out when to meet and have sex? Oh, that's there's, great. There's so many, and it gets complicated. We should also say, yeah. for those that don't know, Carly is an incredible columnist. She writes a column called Slut Ever, and she has a show on Vice called Slut Ever that she is the host and producer and, and, and writer of and creator of. It's a wonderful show, and we're speaking about an ep a recent episode that she had. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I you're no you're context. You're welcome, Vice. <laughs> Thanks for using up my time. Everyone, Vice. Is, does AOL Build know that you're doing this? <laughs> oh, we're really... <laughs> Bad that we talked about Vice. Okay, next question. <laughs> no, we love Vice, right? Okay, um, hi. <laughs> Can't wait to dive into the show. Um, yeah. But also, how has your like character dynamics changed from like past projects? Like, what have you gained? Like, what type of like fluidity did you guys have to like battle with or like endear like gain? Do, do you mean like how did this? How did uh, being in this part uh, 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 influence ourselves as yeah. people? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a very I think it's uh, like. Uh, good timing, I think, to, to be in the show, like be about your mid twenties and be in your mid twenties. Right now, which is yeah. convenient. As yeah, us convenient. being in our twenty somethings. Yeah, you know. exactly. Um, so living in LA, living in Los yes. Angeles. Um, <laughs> I've always, I mean, I've always, I've always been pretty open to the to the to the kind of the concept of the multiple ways of being a human. Right? There's a thousand ways to be a human being, and in this day of diminishing nuance, I like I tried to call myself like I'm, a, I'm like I'm about radical nuance, right? I'm radically defending nuance. Uh, I, I like the, the idea of there being a, a sliding scale of, of all these subjects, not, not living lives in, in these kind of like hard lines, but that there's a sliding scale for all types of identity. And there's multiple like currents of identity that rush through all of us. It's like, is it race? Is it sexuality? Is it gender? Is it because you like hockey? Like there's so many things that influence, you know what I mean? Like the influences make us who we are. 
And the idea that any one of us would be ever uh, wrapped up into, and why would you ever want to stick your flag in the idea of being wrapped up behind one single one of those identities? I just, that, it, it, as soon as you na name something, it loses an aspect of itself. So that's, so, so I've always had that like top of mind. And so when a show rolled around that like, was all the things I just ranted at you about? Like, was it happened to be have all that in there? Like, I was trying to answer this exciting. question after you. Like, how am I supposed to top whatever the hell you just said? <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah. That. I just, you know, I, I just love my character. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me personally, like, um, and this is an influence not only my character Carly, but real life Carly over here. Um, you know, I, I tend to get guilty because of the life that I've lived for so many years and being a teen insecure girl and even an adult insecure girl sometimes um I care what people think a lot and you know you have social media surrounding you and so many people just eyeballing you um and, and this show is such a big like middle finger to everything sort of especially Carly my my character she's so like middle finger <laughs> to everybody sort of um so to have just kind of that perspective and dive into a character that's so in that mindset um but still is real and human so you can definitely like relate to her I have a lot of similarities to Carly um just it, it makes me a happier person like I, I always say like I'm not trying to like you know blow smoke up your ass but like it's yeah. so like it, it has changed my life in a way I feel more confident um talking about this character and playing this character and showing her to the world has made me like open my eyes a little bit and look at the world around me in a, in a different way um and it's truly like I said the most excited I've ever been about a project not just because of the character but because of um not necessarily that we're trying to send this message, but just like what it represents and what people are going to take away from it. So it's just a whole new world. It's like, I'm, it's really an oh, honor oh to be a part new. of, you know? <laughs> so. uh, okay, one more. Oh, hand off. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for like Wait, coming it's all, it's all women. It's like a weird sexist thing happening Hell here, yeah. right? No, 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 go, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'll hand it over to someone else. <laughs> the Sandra's thing happened. <laughs> it's like, what? What's happening? Oh, well, thank you guys so much for, like, coming to speak to us this evening. Um, well, thank you for being here. Of course. Um, what kind of projects do you guys want to move towards in the future? So, well, I, I, season one, season two, season, season three, three, season four. four. I mean, like, yeah, it, you, you actually do ask a really good question because, like, f once you do a show like this, <laughs> this, this, that's this, like, tailor-made to my sensibilities and this, like, uh, um, electric and bright and shiny, like... I, I, I don't know if you read something and go, wait, what's a relationship drama and there's a family and they're like mumbling at each other and the palette's very muted and there's like soft focus. Oh, that's very cool. I can't wait to sign on and do this for nine months. Um, you know, you're right. So, I mean, for me, I was in a position where I was starting to become more discerning about the kind of roles that I want to do. If I'm going to get up at five o'clock in the morning and drive out to the middle of the North, you know, North Valley, um, I, I, I want to be really excited about how, how, how much work, uh, the work that we're going to do. And so, yeah, I think it's made me more discerning. Like, if you're not going to beat this show as far as, like, the kind of part and how, like, the character, then I, I just, it's like, it's, a, it's, a, it's put me in a kind of a weird privileged position of, like, being, like, whoa, I have the freedom to, like, not do boring shit anymore. In the past, sometimes you feel like, <laughs> as an actor, you're like, I need my next job, and you, like, you stop really thinking about the art of it. Which yeah, like, is singing for your we've supper. We've all been there. <laughs> what, what'd you say? Singing for your supper. You're like, yeah. da, da 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 So, yeah, just from here on out, like, having that confidence to uh, trust your mind and what you want and not necessarily, like, thinking about the rest of the influences on you. Like, oh, God, like, I need my next job. And so, it's always sometimes you got to pay rent. Like, you know, you got to do that stuff, but... Uh, yeah, I, I'm completely on the same page as you, and this is, like, my door into that. Um, so, yeah, from here on out, I'm like, well, I am forever not doing a project that I am, like, mm, about. Like, after oh, doing this, know. it's like, <laughs> dude, I got to love it, you know? Greg, have you found that there's, I mean, you brought your sensibility to television, but have you found that there, is there still room in movie make in filmmaking for the Gregoraki sensibility? No. The last movie that really, in terms of your what we know of you that this ties to is, I think, maybe Kaboom. You've made some movies that since then, but... Just, well, I'm White Bird. White Bird, yeah. Excuse me. Do you find that the, the movie world, the independent film world, isn't as thrilling to you at this point? No, I mean, I, I'm a filmmaker. Like, I grew up, went to film school. I'll always make independent movies. Um, I'll always make movies. Um, f but this is such an ideal creative circumstance for me and I love it. I seriously love it so much I, I love it more than probably anything I've ever done and so much of myself is in invested in this show because it's really just 
purely a creative artistic thing. It's not for me about the money or, you know, oh, you have your own TV show. It's really just creatively such an exciting project for me that I just, you know, I love it. And um, we have been fortunate enough. They've uh, they haven't greenlit us, but they've given us uh, a green light to write the season two. So, you know, we're kind of all in on season two right now and coming up with a season two that's crazier than season one. Wow. <laughs> That's what I was also like. Uh, that's the question I have for you personally. It's like, what are we gonna? I mean, how are we going? Where do we? Uh, go? What do we do for an encore after yeah, that? Exactly. After that season finale? It's pretty crazy. Um, well, guys, congratulations on the show. I love Thank it. You. I can't wait to watch more of it. It premieres March 10th on Stars. Uh, oh, watch eight, nine, and ten. Everybody, watch now Apocalypse. And if you're not familiar with Greg's work, go back and watch all of it. He's been a pioneer for decades, and he's got great taste in music. Stars app, nine dollars. That's yeah, it. You know, it's all. Just you, cup of that, coffee a month. Stars app, nine dollars. That's all. Do you it. Go back and you watch don't, have, you don't need. You don't need the Just cable. Get the Stars app. Yeah, don't. Yeah, the rental that you were gonna do for the Doom Generation films. <laughs> don't do that. Nine dollars. You know I won't see. I won't see any of that. Money anyway, <laughs> just like nine dollars on stars, <laughs> stars app. Here, uh, click this button right here. Where is it? Give that uh, March 10th swipe stars, up. nine dollars. Did you want to say something? <laughs> oh, I said swipe up to get the stars app. <laughs> and we or whatever. Just to say that, right? Everybody, give them a huge round of applause for being here. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.